On today's episode of the Cryptoverse, Tether is back in the news again, this time because someone stole $30 million from the Tether Treasury. This is also a good time to talk more generally about the best approach if you want a price stable crypto token. So all of that on today's episode of the Cryptoverse, so stay right there. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I'm your host, Chris Coney. So the Tether story then. Tether got sort of hacked for sort of 30 million. Sort of. So Tether, if you don't know, is a cryptocurrency built on the Omni protocol. So OmniLayer, OmniLayer.org. Now the OmniLayer protocol is a toolbox that allows you to create new tokens on the Bitcoin blockchain, right? So we're so used to tokens being created on Ethereum, we forget that this started out as something you could do on Bitcoin. Now, the benefit being that you inherit all the security and all of the compat compatibility of the Bitcoin network, except you get to create your own custom token. Cool. And Tether is such a thing. So back to the Tether website. There we go. Digital money for the digital age. Now, Tether is designed to be a price stable token, meaning one USD T, as it's known, should always be worth one US dollar. And that is achieved by the Tether Corporation keeping a minimum of one US dollar in their real US dollar bank account for every one USDT token that exists, right? Simple idea. One crypto token for every one US dollar they hold. Now, the obvious question right out of the gates and actually one that keeps coming up is how do we know that Tether Corporation have enough US dollars in the bank to support the tokens that they are issuing. Well, while that's not the subject of today's video, you can go back and watch my previous episode on this, which I published on the 6th of October, 2017, after Tether issued their last audit, right? You see this Friedman LLP did an audit on their bank balances and so on. And the results of that audit back from October was that yes, they did in fact have more dollars on hand than Tether tokens, right? So the link to that is in the video description for today. And the Tether segment starts at four minutes and 18 seconds in. Now, the reason why Tether are back in the news again today is not because of their um, audit controversy, although that has come up again since my previous video that I just showed you. Today, though, Tether themselves have come out with an announcement of a bit of a hack. Here it is, Tether critical announcement. Or, as they tactfully put it here, <clears throat> quote, we discovered that funds were Im improperly removed from the Tether treasury wallet through malicious action by an external attacker. <laughs> That's a very tactful way of putting it. Well, at least it wasn't an inside job, is all I can say. Now, because Tether is a token on the Bitcoin network, if all transfers are public, that's how you're able to track them across the public blockchain, right? That means that they know the address that these funds have been transferred to. Now, their proposed solutions are, one, that all platforms that make use of the Tether token should update their software, the Omni software, to a tweaked version that basically freezes these funds, meaning those Tether tokens cannot be transferred, right? The second thing they're going to do is Tether Corporation, they say they will refuse to redeem any of these stolen tokens if someone comes along and tries to, you know, redeem the USDT tokens for US dollars in the bank, right? They'll say no. So that makes those specific stolen tokens worthless, which also means that Tether tokens are not exactly fungible, meaning not, not every Tether token is equal, right? So you've got this whole bunch of Tether tokens that now are not the same value as everything else. You've got this bunch of Tether tokens that have been stolen that are worthless, and you've got other Tether tokens that are still worth a dollar. So that's the broken fun fungibility right there. And the third thing is, they're working with the Omni Foundation to figure out a way to forcibly get these funds back. Meaning they're looking at doing like an Ethereum style clawback of the funds, kind of like when the DAO was drained of all the investors funds, and Ethereum sort of forked the fundamental protocol to roll that back which is a controversial thing anyway. Now, whichever way you slice this, it seriously erodes the credibility of the Tether token if it wasn't already eroding anyway. 
And that's even before we start to include the controversy around the number of US dollars that are backing them. Now, what is not clear to me, and perhaps you techies can help me out with this in the comments below, I'm not clear on whether this was a flaw in the Omni protocol that Tether are using to create the actual tokens, or whether it was Tether's implementation that had the security flaw, right? In their announcement here that's on the screen, they don't give much of an indication as to where the security hole was. To me, it sounds more likely to be a flaw in Tether's implementation, because if it was a problem with the Omni protocol, then all tokens would be affected, right? And there's no mention of that. And also, if Tether could rightfully blame Omni for this, I'm sure they would have done so. So, you know, you know what's funny about this is I had a chat with uh, Johnny Harrison on this topic while we were having dinner at Bella Italia, you know, after Bitbrom. Where's Bitbrom? Here it is. So, you know, I hosted Bitbrom over the weekend. And uh, afterwards, you know, we're in Bella Italia with a bunch of other people. And we were talking about this topic of price stable assets and how BitShares in particular created a great solution to this like years ago. In fact, I was looking at the uh, BitShares website today and right here, price stable cryptocurrencies. So you can <clears throat> go and look into this yourself, but there were also efforts within the Ethereum community to achieve the same type of thing with the likes of like the MakerDAO with this DAI token, which again is a price stable token on the Ethereum network. Now, what these price stable assets have over Tether is that instead of being backed by US dollars stored by a trusted third party in a fiat bank account, these smart assets like the one on BitShares, which is like U, uh, the BitUSD, they maintain their value by basically being, um, because there's a free market of traders, right, who have a profit incentive to keep the value of the smart asset, the BitUSD in this case, backed by at least an equal amount of value in BitShares which is the native token on the BitShares blockchain, right? Now, that's all a topic for another video, but I think that's a far better solution than what Tether are doing, right? But that's just me. Now, it is a topic for another day, but for now, let me just remind you of something here. Um, we're just two weeks away from the Get Real Talk event in London, where I will be featuring live in person. Now, what I need to talk, say today is that our Facebook and our YouTube ads for this event are gonna go live um, this Friday. So Tony and I are giving our friends, our followers, and our members first refusal on tickets before we start the public marketing campaign. So if you wanna to come to this event, then please go get a ticket before Friday because that's when they're likely to get gobbled up by the general public once they hear about the event through our advertising campaigns. So in conclusion today then, I understand the appeal of Tether right? While the price of all digital assets are so unstable, this is how people are able to make returns that are just out of this world. The other side of that, though, is, is the need for certainty or stability, even if it's for a short amount of time. You know, sometimes we want to just step out of the market, you know, sit on the bench for a rest before getting back in the game. The ongoing question is, where is the best place to go for stability? Right, we've we've discussed a couple of options today, like Tether or other price stable assets like on BitShares or on MakerDAO. We also always have the option of moving the value back into fiat currency, of course. And then we have services like uh, Voltoro or Uphold. Now, these services allow us to switch our value over to things like gold in a couple of clicks. I personally use both Voltoro and Uphold when I want to go and sit on the bench for a rest. So if you are at all interested in these things, the links to both of these services will be in the video description for today. It's Voltoro.com and Uphold.com. Uh, full disclosure, the link to Voltoro that is in the video description, that is my referral link. So if you're not comfortable with clicking on that and me getting, you know, a little bonus for you signing up, then just Google Voltoro's name or just type in Voltoro.com without the reference on the end, and then you'll just go directly to their website and sign up naked. Alrighty then, guys. Thank you very much for joining me today. If you like this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new around here, get subscribed. And if you would like access to my very best material, such as my step-by-step -step online courses, that will teach you things like how to make and save money with Bitcoin, then head over to my website, which is cryptoversity.com. Click on the courses section, 
and you can take any one of these online courses starting from the foundation level right up to the trader level which will teach you all kinds of things you want to know from the basics through to the advanced topics all these courses are made by my own fair hands so that's all for today guys i'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the cryptoverse so until then it's me chris coney saying bye for now